What is up, you poppin' prime ape, and welcome back to HJC Games. You got Hayden here, as always, and it is still Battle Styles Weekend. And so far, so good. Our first booster box and our first ETB both gave us a secret rare and some really cool single strike ultra rares along the way, so we can't really complain, but we also can't stop because we have more booster boxes, we have more Pokemon to find, we have a single strike set to complete, We've got some rapid strikes to find as well, we've got a meta to talk about, there's so much happening in the Pokemon trading card game. Let's just get into it, get our towers out, and get going. So, so far, we have had meta shifts, as we would expect. And it's only been out on PTCGO for... Today is Saturday, so about three days. And, you know, it's been hard to get packs. Uh, packs have been trading at an extreme, extreme premium. They've been hard to find, and so you've been seeing a lot of the same meta decks as normal. Oh my god, you cannot be serious. You just... You know, I've ruined it. I've... It's going to be a good pack. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to, we're going to go slow through this one. Blipbug. Esper. Frillish. Roly Coley. Spoink. All right. Hollow Cheryl. Oh, the double tap. The double tap. Hollow Cheryl into secret rare rainbow Cheryl. Hell yes. This is awesome. Cheryl, heal all damage from each of your evolution Pokemon, and if you do, discard all energy from the Pokemon that were healed in this way. This card is real. Uh, this card is strong. Not only is this card... I haven't really gotten to see it in use with the Steel decks that I was talking about oh so long ago, but um, it has come into play with just Urshifu directly. And that's the thing, is since all the Urshifus kind of discard their energy to begin with, you have a very natural period to pop Cheryl off and get a free heal in. And we're talking, like, powerful heals, you know? We're talking, we've got... Ugh. Hold on, let me create a spot for the rares. Uh, we're talking, we've got these, like, you know, 330 HP Pokemon, and we're healing up hits that are for, you know, in some cases, 230. They're Zacian hits, or they're 150 straights, or, you know, 180 from Salazzles or whatever. So these are really relevant heals that are coming out with like almost no downside because you also have uh, nice, nice, nice Sherem. Very cool. Because you also have the Bronzong, or not the Bronzong, because you also have the Rapid Strike energy. You've got the Rapid Strike energy and you've got the Houndoom. So you're also reloading really, really quickly after you heal. And Cheryl has proven pretty powerful. And so that's kind of so, of the meta decks I've seen, I've seen some Rapid Strikes pop up so far. It seems that people are going for those pretty aggressively, which isn't really a surprise. Those decks looked good from the get-go. Another whole, uh, Hollow Foil Rare, or Reverse Foil Rare, not bad. And they are powerful. Um, you know, you're playing about two or three or Shifu Maxes, and you're really playing the bench. Um, it's really, really easy to set up turns where you're taking four or five prizes, uh, using a G-Max 100 Furious Blows to knock out a Dedenne, a one prizer, or, you know, s something else nice. Something else that you've really set up that might be a multi-prizer. Nice, nice, nice. Reverse Hollow Foil Heim Doom. This is a very real card. Clay Doll, this is not. Um, and, and just like that, I mean, you look like you're doing well against the Rapid Strike deck, and then suddenly they grab four prizes, five prizes from you, and the game is completely over. Uh, with the Cheryl, they're kind of hard to interact with. I haven't really, I don't think you want to take out the Urshifus. The Urshifus just have so much health. Um, it just takes you forever to get through them, and since they're evolution Pokemon, one Cheryl and... You've almost lost the game is what it feels like because you've lost so much tempo against such a such a heavy tempo deck. So it feels like you want to work around those Urshifus and try and tank through them. But that's hard to do as well because Strafe is super real. For a single energy and a switch, you know, you're doing 150 damage. Tower of Waters, retreat cost of each Rapid Strike Pokemon in play is double colorless less. This helps enable Strafe. This is also a real card for sure. Uh, we've got the Entei. Look at that. Um, and because of Strafe, you know, Strafe lines up really, really nicely with Pokemon that have less than 300 HP. You know what Pokemon have less than 300 HP? Every single Tag Team GX Pokemon in the entire game. So, unless you have some sort of Fighting Resistance or, uh, Loop Metal or ADP with Big Charm, it's really easy for the Strafe to even two-shot your, uh, GX Pokemon, which puts you in a very, 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 very bad spot. So, just because of that, you know, and especially, like, let's say you're playing a Mewtwo and Mew, uh, Strafe actually sets it up so that G-Max 100 Furious Blows, we've got a V in here, uh, so that G-Max 100 Furious Blows knocks Mewtwo and Mew out. 
so it feels like the damage numbers are really good across the board it feels like the support uh package for the pokemon is very very strong it can ramp quickly and this is a oh wasn't what i expected full art stoutland v uh colorless pokemon 210 hp double dip fangs for triple colorless and 40 damage and if your opponent's basic pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack take one more prize card then for quadruple colorless wild tackle 200 this pokemon also does 30 damage to itself yeah this isn't going to get there maybe if double dip fang did like 20 more damage honestly then it could get there as some sort of weird mad party tech um if mad party kind of got out of control but since poltergeist has 60 hp you know, they just don't, they just kind of avoid the Bunnelbees as much as possible, and then that Fang doesn't really get there. And you can't get there either with uh, Choice Band, so I just don't think that Stoutland's going to make it anywhere relevant, to be totally honest with you. But, you know, we'll see. Um, but that's what Rapid Strike has felt like. I haven't played as much Single Strike, um, but right now Rapid Strike, it honestly feels like the deck is in another tier. And it might be just because, you know, it's a new deck and no one really knows how to play uh, against it or how to tech around it. We've got another V. But right now, it literally feels like it com just completely outclasses all GX Pokemon entirely, which is something. Nice! This is excellent. This is exactly what we want. Rapid Striker Shifu V, here's the boy himself. He's got 220 HP, Fighting Type, Rapid Strike, Strafe for a single fighting, 30 damage, and you may switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. And then the regular 100 Furious Blows, the VMAX one does a GMAX 100 Furious Blows, but regular 100 Furious Blows is double fighting and a colorless for 150 uh, this Pokemon is not bad on its own. Uh, yes, this isn't Zacian, um, and it's going to be harder. It's it, it's not Zacian, but it's almost as easy to load up as Zacian. You can get a turn 200 Furious Blows, no problem with the Rapid Strike energy. Um, it's got decent health. It doesn't have Intrepid Sword, but with Strafe, you're kind of mobile. 100 Furious Blows you can use twice in a row. And most importantly, it becomes our Shifu VMAX. So it's a solid V just across the board. Um, we're getting some good energy here, too. I think that's our second single strike energy. Um... And I, I think I think that's kind of okay that it feels that Rapid Strike outclasses all the GX Pokemon because I also feel it's going to be a bit more of a fun deck to play than your average V or V Max deck. To me, a lot of the V Max decks really just feel like, hey, I have big numbers and I'm going to throw big numbers uh, at my opponent. Whereas GX attacks definitely do have that notion of like, hey, I have big numbers and I'm going to throw them at my opponent, but they also have GX attacks. So they also have this thing that can kind of subvert the numbers and give you some play if your numbers aren't, you know, lined up super well against your opponent's numbers and so on and so forth. And I think that GX attacks are really cool and really engaging and add a nice level of strategy and losing those, uh, ew, and losing those, you know, is kind of a shame, but I think like Rapid Strike VMAX are... Uh, uh, or Shifu is the kind of VMAX card we need to replace them and keep the level of interactivity, keep the level of just coolness and playability high while it's not feeling like it's just a slugfest, which is how, like, um, Eternatus feels. Eternatus just, just feels like it's a slugfest. And we got another V in here, folks. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good so far. All right, Bruxish, what do we got behind you? Tapu Koku VMAX. All right, another VMAX. This is the regular one. Tapu Koku VMAX has 320 HP. It is an electric type, a lightning type. It evolves from Tapu Koku V. And for double lightning and a colorless, it has Max Shock for 180. And if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, their active Pokemon is now paralyzed as a single retreat cost. Um, this is an interesting one as to whether or not this is going to get there. Uh, I don't think this sees play until rotation, just because Pikaram and Raichu Raichu are just, just better. Like, it, Tandem Shock is just better than Max Shock, even though Max Shock does do more damage, but Max Shock is kind of uh, situational. But we have seen this style of deck work. This Picarom style where you let your opponent get ahead on prize cards, you reset stamp them down to one, and then you just paralyze them out of the entire game. So I think that once, um, I think that once Picarom rotates, there's a chance that that deck comes into play and is relevant. And I also think this card could be relevant. This isn't one I've talked about uh, yet. The Golbat with Discrete Draw. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may draw two cards, and it evolves into a Crobat that has the same thing but draws three cards. So that means this evolution line, you put three Pokemon in, but it draws you five cards, which is like on par with Crobat V and Dedenne GX, which I think is relevant for like possibly Eternatus. I think there could be a couple of these in here for Eternatus to maybe try and prevent reset stamps or draw outs, and especially also give you the ability to draw additional cards when your bench is all already full which is a problem that Eternatus can sometimes hit where it wants to boost up to 270 to take out something like a Mewtwo and Mew but then you're kind of out of draws for a long time and you could get locked you know you could get um 
uh, a switch lock or boss locked or energy locked or anything like that. So I think that could have some play. The other deck I've actually really seen from Battle Styles is not single strike so far. It is the Salazzle deck. Yeah, yeah, I talked about the Salazzle deck very, very briefly a few times. Uh, reverse Hall Coil Phoebe, Galarian Slowbo. And the gist of the Salazzle deck is you are using the new Bell Sprout and Weepin Bell. And when the Weepin Bell evolves, and when the Bell Sprout evolves into the Weepin Bell, your opponent's active Pokemon becomes burned and poisoned. You, com you combine that with Yellhorn, which makes them confused. Then they have three status conditions. And Salazzle's attack says it does 90 damage for each status condition on your opponent. What does this do? Stage 1, Sinus, Floor, 30 HP, Fire, Overheater. All right, this is the Burns one. It doesn't go away. Um, and that's actually been relevant. 270 HP hits a lot of breakpoints. That kills a Mewtwo and Mew. That kills a Picarom. That kills an, a Raichu Raichu. That kills a Luke Metal before it powers up. It almost, like, with a Vitality Ban or a, a Galarian Zigzagoon, it kills an ADP. And it's actually... From what I was seeing, it was decently consistent to set up. It set up pretty quickly, and because, um, I haven't seen this come into play, but but because of all the status conditions, it also seemed like it exerted a good presence on the board and was kind of hard to interact with, you know? I wasn't playing, this is like the third or fourth goal bat in the row, we're popping off with those. I wasn't playing a Switch heavy deck, or a deck with like, um, scoop up nets and basic Pokemon. I was playing the Mewtwo and Mew toolbox deck. Uh, we got a V or a V Max in here as well. I'll go through it kind of slow. And, you know, it just kind of got to me. It, there wasn't much I was doing. It could easily trade for three or more prizes. The setup was easy. And Flapple. Ugh, Flapple V. This is not really what we want. We've seen the Flapple V. This is the non-full art Flapple V. I do like this art. I do like the, the actual sour spit he's throwing out there. And Flapple is kind of an interesting looking Pokemon. But overall, that card is terrible. And, hey, no gold bats. Let's tidy up real briefly. And so because of that, it felt like the deck kind of, the Salazzle deck set up quickly, hit hard, and just had a big presence on the board, which I think is the mark of a good single prize deck because it's just, it's hard to race it, you know? Um, they get ahead really quickly in the race, and then that's that's sort of, that's sort of the game. And other decks is Corviknight has started to pop up a little bit. Um, kind of, I've been trying to play with it. Another V, another V. Let's go through this one slow too. I've been trying to play with it in sort of the turbozation shell, but I think you really need to change that shell up a lot. Simply, I think that should be in her Shifu of some sorts. You probably saw the number, so you can go back, pause the video, and figure it out. And it is, I told you all, I told you, the single strike, the single striker Shifu absolutely loves us. This is our third single striker Shifu V Max. We almost have a playset of single striker Shifu V Maxes at this point, and I I know this card is going to be good. I know this card is going to make a splash in the meta. I just haven't seen it actually come into play with how strong or Shifu actually is, just just from a numbers perspective and just from evolution and type, you know, pairing and everything like that. I think that single striker Shifu is inevitable, um, which is kind of surprising that I haven't seen it. But I think people are just rushing to play Rapid Strike, because I, I do think Rapid Strike, like, while I think Single Striker Shifu is definitely going to be good, I think Rapid Strike is the better deck. Finally, an Octillery. This is our first Octillery. So Octillery is a 110 HP water Pokemon, Rapid Strike, and has the Rapid Strike search ability, where once during your turn, you may search your deck for a Rapid Strike card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck, and you can't use more than one of these each turn. Uh, doesn't matter. That's incredibly powerful. That is a big, big, big part of the actual um, Rapid Strike deck. That helps you find your Rapid Strike energy once you offload them. Helps you find your stadiums. Helps you just find your Shifus. Um, all sorts of stuff. That And that's the thing. is That's going to be a Pokemon that's going to continue to raise in value and is going to continue to be relevant. Nice. Nice. We got the back-to-back. -back. We got the double tap Octillery. The regular Hollow Foil into the reverse Hollow Foil into a useless Stunyorner. You can see them both down there. Look at that. Doop, doop. Um, and that, but that's a card that's going to remain relevant because their Rapid Strike and Single Strike support is going to continue for at least the next two expansions, kind of like GX kind of stuff did. So we will see more Single Strike and Rapid Strike Pokemon. Octillery will be able to look more things up. That will make Octillery more and more powerful. And Octillery is going to remain super relevant. EXP Share is back in the format. I've definitely seen EXP Share uh, played around. Uh, EXP Share and um, Escape Rope have been seeing some good play. I saw EXP Share used to good effect on a Dragapult deck 
where they were able to recycle Dragapult's energy from the VMAX to the next VMAX and sort of just keep going with a fast setup and make sure they're constantly pressuring with that, like, Max G-Max Phantom or whatever the hell it's called. Onyard, Center Scorch. So far, pretty good opening. And Escape Rope has kind of just been everywhere, um, which I think surprises about no one. Escape Rope is... It's just a... It's a good mobility card, you know? It keeps things moving. It helps with Zations, you know. Ah, oh, we've got another good one in here. Take it slow. It helps with Zations, making sure they get to attack. It helps swapping your opponent out. It's really good at setting up strafes as well. It's just solid across the board. It's just what you want. All right, what do we have here? We've got the Blip Bug into Single Striker Shifu V Max. Rapid Striker Shifu V. I'll take it, I'll take it, you know? It's not the, it's not a V Max, but it's our second Rapid Striker Shifu V of this opening, which isn't too bad. All right. All right. I was talking about the Corviknight, and I think I got distracted by the Octillery, or a single striker shoot with VMAX or something. But I haven't seen Corviknight fully come into being yet. Uh, it's a deck I'm super interested in because I've really in been enjoying playing the Turbozation, and I kind of see it as, you know, an offshoot of that. There's so many good rares in this set. There really are between Houndooms and Octillaries and Salazzles and maybe we just get a bunch of Houndooms because how many Houndooms do we have? I'm kind of curious now. We're going to find out, folks. How many Houndooms have we got? How many good rares do we have? One, two, three, four. We'll count that. Just four. That's not, that's not as many as I thought. I guess we have a couple good ones in here that we'll count really quick. Dumped a card. It is a oh, poor Cheryl. That's poor Cheryl. I'm sorry, Cheryl. All right. One, two, three, four. I think mean, it's pretty good. It's about eight. It feels like there's a good segment or a good selection of solid rares in the set, which is always good for opening, you know? You don't want to only feel good when you pull the ultra rares and the secret rares. You want there to be good rares as well. And so that's so far, this has been one of my favorite sets to open of all time. And, like, I've only opened a booster box, two booster boxes, this is the second, and an ETB, which I think says a lot for this set going forward. Um, yeah. But this Corviknight deck. Sorry. This Corviknight deck. Um... Like, I, like I've said before, the big heart and soul of it is the Cheryl, the secret Cheryl we've gotten earlier, and the free retreat. And I think right now it's kind of just held back by a lack of product. People just don't have the cards, and we have another V in here. It's the Tapakoko V. All right, very nice. We got your older brother. Tapakoko V has 210 HP. It's a lightning Pokemon. For a single lightning, you get Electro Ball for 40 damage. For double lightning and a colorless, Spiral Thunder 20 plus. Does 40 more damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, okay, this is a reverse of Bolton's kind of Bolt Storm. That could actually, I like that. I like that, actually. That could have some tech play, some tech counterplay against something like um, Cinescorch. Cinescorch loves to stack energy. It's a big part of its actual play plan. Um, something on the waterfront, they tend to stack a lot of energy. Maybe Cherum or something preparing a lot of energy. We'll have to see. Carcoal into the Bronzong. And, you know, this is what I'm sort of missing online to really make the, the metal decks is I need the Bronzong and I need another Corviknight before I can really get out there. But I do think those decks have promise, just haven't seen them materialize yet. Which, I mean, like I said, is because right now the way Battle Styles packs are trading online is eight Vivid Voltage packs is one Battle Styles pack. Very nice. Reverse Hollow Foil Energy. We will absolutely take that. First, Jellicent. That's why we felt good about this this opening, because we've only gotten one of the Jellyfish Missiles. Uh, this card's terrible. We don't want Jellyfish Missiles. They sting, and they hurt, and they're terrible. But 8 to 1 is not... It's not an equitable price, you know? So you have your whales, and all of your whales have super full art, uh, Rapid Striker, Shifu V Maxes, and then you have people who are running, you know, the new cards they're able to run is... There he is. Is an old escape rope from an old set you know that's about it but that will keep changing um as because as of friday you can buy them for coins which that helps get cards in circulation and as of next week they will appear as tournament rewards which will definitely boost up the online um population and just over time more and more packs come out online we've seen the value of shining fates packs online drop pretty considerably over time i think they're about three one they started out at about six or eight to one something crazy like that 
So still a lot of metal meta to kind of settle down. I was watching Azul play a Tapu Koko or a Tapu Bulu deck, which I don't know. It didn't seem very great to be totally honest with you, but it seemed like it was an option. So a lot out there, a lot to kind of figure out. All right, cool, cool, cool. Embor, the uh, reverse holofoil Embor. I don't think this will get there just because it's such a long evolution line. Whoops. But um, it's something to keep in mind. You know, I thought I thought the Salazzle wouldn't get there. Three packs left, folks. And it did. Let's see if we can't pop out with one more Ultra Rare or one more Seeker Rare would be crazy. Well, one, one last little something something. But, you know, I'm really excited to, I think we have something in here. I'm really excited to honestly put in these codes online and get me some more online packs. Uh, so I can play more and let you all know. Oh, that, uh, you hate to see that. You hate to see that. You just hate to see the Stoutland V. And let you all know, you know, what's playing well and what is not. Um, to no one's surprise, a lot of the old decks remain good. You know, we're still seeing ADPs. Um, we're seeing like ADPs with escape ropes, which are pretty effective, things like that. So your old cards are not dead. This has not completely replaced the meta, but it has shaken it up in the best of ways. I think the meta, I think the meta was in a good spot for how card games are. There was, you know, there was a good 10 competitive decks or so, which is, says a lot. Most card games don't have 10 competitive decks at any point in time, but we had had those same 10 competitive decks for a while. So it's really nice to see them finally sort of mixed up. Last pack, folks. Let's see if we can't. Close out with something fancy here. Start with the Sizzlipede. Single Strike Mankey. Ponyard. Poor Ponyard. Never good. Blipbug. Poor Blipbug. Shinx. Fucking adorable. Fucking adorable. Into the Center Scorch. Not gonna make it. Electivire. We've gotten a lot of Electivires this pull. Energy. Grumpig. An Escape Rope. We've talked about that. And a Fear Row. Not a bad set of pulls, to be honest with you all, folks. Let's go through these really quick. The second Stoutland V, Tapu Koko V, Flapple V, second Rapid Striker Shifu V. It's our third single Striker Shifu V Max, Tapu Koko V Max, first Rapid Striker Shifu V, Full Art Stoutland V, and of course, from our first pack of the booster box, the Secret Rainbow Cheryl. Absolutely awesome. This was a solid booster box. I think this booster box has come through on the value front. All right, folks, as always, you can find these cards and so many more cards over at hjc.cards. Uh, everything we open up on the channel, you can find over there, and it really helps us out a ton when you go buy our cards. So go check us out, see if there's something we have that you need. But other than that, I'm going to do what I always do, and I'll go ahead and I will uh, wish you all a good night and tell you all to um, be good to one another.